Background Two years into our marriage, my husband Kyle cheated on me with one of his colleagues, Madison. Kyle immediately admitted what happened, and he said that it was a drunken one-time thing that they both regretted. We were having a rough patch in our relationship at that time because of the stress of being unable to conceive. So I tried to understand him and gave our relationship another chance. I was gutted when he later told me that Madison was pregnant, but what's done was done, and the only thing I could do was accept it. They now have a son, Kit. Kyle's parents adore Kit, and they have him once a week every Friday. I don't begrudge them for that, and I myself care about Kit like a stepson, because none of any of this is his fault. Which brings us to the issue. For Mother's Day, my father-in-law had an artist draw a Disney-style family portrait of their family. My mother-in-law sent a picture of the portrait that they put in the living room of their house. My parents-in-law are in the middle, and to their left is Kyle's sister, Carla. Beside Carla is her husband, and in front of them are their two kids. To their right is me, beside me is Kyle, and beside Kyle is Madison. Kit is in front of Kyle. My heart sank when I saw Madison. I have nothing against Kit being in the picture, and I know that they are my in-laws and close to Madison too, but to have her in the portrait with Kyle between me and her, that just broke my heart. I called my mother-in-law and asked her if they could please keep that picture in their room or somewhere else in the house, not in the living room where I will see it every time we're over because it reminds me that I will always share my husband with the woman he cheated on me with because she gave birth to the child that I don't have with him. My mother-in-law apologized for hurting my feelings, but said that they didn't mean to upset me. They were just thinking of Kit and how they didn't want him to feel that his mother isn't family to them. My mother-in-law said that she will put the portrait in her bedroom instead. I told her that frankly, I don't know how they didn't think that it would upset me, but if they move the portrait elsewhere, then I accept their apology and that's the end of the issue for me. Hours later, Carla called me saying that my complaining about the portrait made my mother-in-law cry on Mother's Day, and now my father-in-law is also upset that his gift to her, which they were originally both happy about, is causing all of this drama. Carla said I was out of line for telling my in-laws what they can or cannot put in their living room, and that in reality, Madison is part of their family because she is Kit's mom. She said that I should learn to live with the fact that Madison will always be there as long as I'm married to Kyle because of Kit. I told her that I know Madison will always be there, but is it too much to ask them not to rub it in my face with a portrait showing my husband between me and Madison? Am I really the a-hole here? No a-holes. You should consider leaving your husband. You're never going to be free from the reminder of his infidelities. Either accept it, all of it, or get a divorce. You can't expect the rest of the family to walk on eggshells because your husband betrayed everything marriage is supposed to stand for. Oh my God, not the a-hole. Madison was some chick their son screwed around with behind his wife's back, not someone who has been around his family for years. How frickin' rude. No a-hole. I don't think you're wrong for being upset, at all. It must be awful that your partner not only cheated on you, but cheated on you and fathered a child while your relationship was suffering due to fertility issues. Your in-laws, however, were not wrong to include her in the picture. She is the mother of their grandchild, and from what you said, they seem to have a good relationship with her. While I don't think you're being unreasonable, you chose to forgive and stay with Kyle. This is the fallout from that. You need to come to terms with it because you can't live your life pretending it never happened and expecting everyone to alter their lives to avoid reminding you. Edited to add, the only way I could see your in-laws being a-holes were if they ignored the fact that you were Kyle's partner, had issues with you due to your infertility, fertility issues, which from what you've said, they don't. I still don't think you're an a-hole for feeling the way you do. Infidelity and fertility issues are crushing, but staying with Kyle, especially once he got Madison pregnant, means you have to accept and move past this, either with therapy or, as others have suggested, divorce. My, 25 female, husband, 28 male, is from South Africa. He is black and I am white, and we live in the U.S. We met in 2019 and got married at the beginning of 2021. Because of world events, I've never met his family. We flew down to South Africa a few days for his brother's traditional ceremony. This was my first time in the country. Before arriving in the country, my sister-in-law asked for my size and input on dresses and skirts that I was supposed to wear to meet the family. I didn't think much of everything, but I gave her my size. When we got at her house, she brought out the clothes. She said while in her home, I don't have to follow traditional dress code, but I need to remember that when I go to my in-laws and their family home, I would need to. My husband had mentioned this before, but he also told me to speak to his sister as she knows more about dressing as a married woman than he does. 
Anyway, fast forward to the day of the events. I arrived at my in-laws. I was alone because my husband needed to be there before me, and I also didn't want to go early with him. Before I even stepped into the yard, my sister-in-law came out and saw that I was wearing a romper. She then asked me where the clothes she gave me were, but I told her that I was getting too hot and I didn't want to wear so much clothing. The clothing consisted of a skirt, a white shirt, a black scarf for my head, another scarf to tie around my waist, and a blanket to put around my shoulders. She was pissed. She said she understood that it was hot, but that I still needed to wear the clothes. I pointed out that she was also married, but she wasn't wearing the same outfit. She said since she was in her family home, she could wear whatever, but she was still following customs as her head was covered and she was wearing a skirt. She also said that because her husband is white, she's not expected to wear the same bridal outfit. I was pretty annoyed because I don't understand why they feel the need to control what I wear. I called my husband and he was shocked that I wasn't dressed as I was supposed to. My sister-in-law offered to get me something to wear, but I refused. I said that it was my body and as such, I could wear whatever I wanted. I called her a misogynist. They told me that I couldn't enter the yard because not only was I not wearing a skirt, my head wasn't covered and the romper was short. I ended up leaving and spending two days alone at the B&B we booked. My husband has barely spoken to me because he's so angry and disappointed. I spoke to my sister and my mother, and they were on my side, and they say that this country is very patriarchal, where women have little rights so they are proud of me for standing up for myself. However, my husband says that I embarrassed him and his family, and he can't believe that I was so prideful after he shared how things were. So, I just wanted to ask, am I the a-hole for refusing to wear the clothes? You're the a-hole. You were a guest in another country for a traditional event, point blank. That means you follow the customs for the country. Not only that, you said your husband had talked to you about these customs. If you were not going to be okay wearing a traditional outfit from your spouse's country for a wedding, you shouldn't have agreed to go. This is disrespectful to the culture you are visiting and your new family. I understand your point of view, but at the same time you were a guest in their country and in their home, so adhering to their cultural customs would have been the gracious thing to do, especially since your sister-in-law went out of her way to prepare and help you. For the brief time you were there, I think you could have just gone along with everything so you could actually meet your husband's family. I have to say yes the a-hole, because you traveled such a long way and this was so important to your husband. But instead of doing this one thing for him, you ditched out on all of them and spent your time there alone in your B&B. That's a bit much. You're the a-hole. Your husband told you in advance that you would need to wear a skirt. You chose to attend the wedding. If you felt that strongly about the dress code, and I don't blame you for that, you should have stayed home. Plus, if the issue really was the heat, you could have worn the skirt and headscarf but not added the extra blanket and waist scarf. You didn't need to go all the way to wearing a romper to a wedding event. My husband, 45, and I, 44, have been married for 19 years. We have five children together. Seven years ago, he had an affair with a woman he met at his workplace. She didn't work there, however, and he got her pregnant. He told me the truth about all of this when the woman was about six months pregnant. He also got a paternity test to make sure the baby was his. When he told me this, I felt betrayed and destroyed. But after marriage counseling and the fact that I still love him, I decided to give him another chance. He's been absolutely amazing since then and has given me no reason to suspect he's up to his former misbehavior. We're going to celebrate our 20-year anniversary in two weeks. After the woman gave birth to the baby, she kept custody of him and my husband has been giving money to support the child. We have rarely heard from the woman since then, until last week when she approached my husband at his workplace. My husband told me that the woman wants him to be in the child's life and be a father figure to him, take him to sports games, play with him, go to school-related things, etc. I told my husband he has no legal obligation to do that, and I didn't want him to. If he did so, then he would be spending less time with our children, and it would make things in our family and extended family a lot more awkward. As of now, nobody else in our family knows about the affair and the illegitimate child except me, my husband, and his sister. Also, he has never had a relationship with this child, so why start now and add even more responsibility to himself? The incentives I provided him are ones that are beneficial to him and to our family. He told me that it would be best for the child if he was in his life and tried to be a father figure. I told him I see where he's coming from and it's very commendable. My husband is a very good person. But by doing this, he is detracting from the love and attention he will show the family he knows and has been with for a long time. This also may make things awkward between him and our children. Additionally, 
Someone in our family or someone we know might see him hanging out with the child, and that might lead to the revelation of his affair and damage his relationship with my family members, and maybe even his own family. I told him ultimately it's his choice, but I am firmly against it. Am I the a-hole? You're the a-hole. As soon as you chose to stay with him, you had to have understood this. That child is just as much his child as the children you have together and didn't do anything to not deserve a father. You knew he was having a child with someone else and chose to stick through the marriage. This is part of that. If this is something he himself wants, you're the a-hole if you tell him not to or try and stop it. He is the a-hole for cheating, obviously, but that was a long time ago and the child doesn't deserve to be punished for that. He sucks for cheating. You suck for wanting him to be a deadbeat absentee dad to keep your nuclear BS family appearance. His son doesn't suck and doesn't deserve this treatment. He doesn't deserve to grow up without family so you can keep pretending yours is perfect. I'm going with no a-hole. You're totally entitled to be hurt and upset and not want him to bond with his child. But this is his child and getting to know him is the right thing to do. He wouldn't be being a father figure to his son. He is his father. Update. Firstly, I would like to say that I think quite a lot of people here misunderstood what I was trying to say. I explained in the comments that I never had any intention of actively preventing my husband from spending time with his child. I wouldn't do that. All I did was voice my opinion to him. I even told him that ultimately it's his choice what he does regarding this. I will still love him regardless. Several hours after I created my post, I mentioned in the comments that you have convinced me to be okay with my husband spending time with his son. A lot of these comments weren't just answers, but also solid advice on how to proceed with this. Thank you. A few hours ago, I talked to my husband about this. I told him how the comments have changed my opinion on this matter. He, of course, is now overjoyed that I support him in his effort to establish a relationship with his son. We agreed that after he's forged a good, strong relationship with his child, we will then introduce him to the rest of the family and work from there. A few comments on my post mentioned other women who have also done the same and how they are now happy. That made me hopeful that this situation could have positive effects on our family as well. In the meantime, my husband and I will construct a plan on how he will be spending time with his child and how we will talk to the family once we're ready. Note, we live in one of only two countries in the whole effing world that hasn't legalized divorce. My sister started dating a married man, Bob, around two and a half years ago. He is even now still legally married to his wife, Susan. He says they broke up a year before he and my sister started dating, but continued to live together as he and his wife have three children. Within a couple of months after Bob began dating my sister, he moved out. Up till then, I had repeatedly hinted that she should just forget him and leave him since it was so messy. I doubted they were actually separated and thought he was just stringing my sister along. But now it's been a while and they are really happy. They live together. He is with her every single night and they get the children maybe two to three days a week. Bob has been wonderful to my sister and he has even introduced her to his own parents. My sister has been hiding all this from our extremely conservative and religious parents. But long story short, last week they finally found out about Bob. They are furious with my sister. She is heartbroken at our parents constantly sending her angry texts and threatening to cut off contact with her and she asked me what to do. She said she was considering just leaving Bob. After all, she reasoned, it wasn't just my parents. They could never get married. Plus, the judgment of our parents just reflected how our other relatives, friends, would react. I asked if she loves him, and she said yes. So I said she shouldn't leave him, or at least not yet. I was Bob's biggest detractor at first, but I've seen over the past two years how kind he is and how happy he makes my sister. I said tensions are very high right now, but she should wait for emotions to cool down before deciding. After all, if our backwards country had divorce, none of this would be a problem. She cried and thanked me for always supporting her and giving her the courage to stick with Bob. So I was thinking, yo, all good, love wins. I stated the same opinion to my parents, and now they're furious at me too. They say I don't understand the stigma my sister will endure. They reminded me that any children will be illegitimate and adultery is technically illegal in our country. They said all the legal benefits and powers of being a legal spouse remains with the wife, not the mistress. They said I shouldn't impose my liberal leftist ideas on wanting divorce to be legalized on my sister, who is the one who will suffer as long as she stays with Bob. We have annulment, but it is prohibitively expensive. Plus, one of the spouses would have to be declared psychologically unfit for marriage in order for annulment to be valid. 
Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Normally, they'd be ducked up, but they're married only by technicality because of a messed up system. Sorry about your backwards parents. Huge a-holes for choosing to be hateful and ignorant. Everyone sucks here. Your sister and her boyfriend are indeed committing adultery, immoral, and your sister is abiding and facilitating his effectual abandonment, alienation of spouse via infidelity, and at the very least, is morally failing to be a good example to his children. Marriage is pledging a commitment and then thereafter having a duty to follow through. He's failed this. Doesn't matter his excuse. Everyone in your nation knows the law, and that doesn't give citizens carte blanche permission to flout one's own commitments and duties. Rather, shows the character and commitment of those who willfully choose to undergo marriage oaths. If your sister bears children, they are disadvantaged in society by being legal bastards. Your parents are right, and you gave bad advice. Being in love is not an excuse to act immorally with reckless disregard to the future ramifications of these immoral and selfish decisions.